From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This message is brought to you by the audiobook The Last Observer – A Magic Battle for Reality by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com or look for a link in this show's description. Hey, weirdos! Uh, thanks for coming back to the channel. And before we jump into this video, I wanted to give you a real quick update on what's going on with my life. This coming Thursday, September 14th, uh, you might not see a new video from me. And that's because I'm going to be away from my studio and in front of the camera instead of in front of the microphone. And uh, I will be actually filming a new TV pilot called The Miskatonic Files. Now, uh, if you're a fan of H.P. Lovecraft, then the name Miskatonic probably already means something to you. It is in the H.P. Lovecraft universe. And originally, back in 2014, this was just supposed to be a short web series that some friends and I were working on, and uh, it didn't quite work out back then uh, for one reason or another. Things just didn't you know, that 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 happens with you know with with projects all the time in the film industry, especially in the independent film industry. We all have real jobs, <laughs> uh, but uh, we started it back then, and then later on uh, we decided to uh, film it again and see if maybe we could maybe make a short film out of it or something. Well, now uh, actually there's been some interest, and so we're creating a TV pilot for somebody who's actually asking us to do that for them. So uh, I will be gone Thursday doing my part as a professor at Miskatonic uh, University, and I won't give you any give away any more than that. But uh, if you would like to see some of what we've created in the past, when we thought we were doing a web series, uh, and then we then we thought we were doing a short film, well, uh, there are some web links on YouTube. If you look for them, well, I just gathered them up. There's three of them, and I've got them down in the description below if you want to check them out. But now for what you came here for, the actual video. <laughs> Workaholic Japan is known for long office hours and stressed out employees, but one company claims to have a cure. Cats. A total of nine fluffy felines eat, sleep, and walk freely in a small office of IT firm Foray in Tokyo. Hidenobu Fukuda, who heads the firm, he introduced an office cat policy back in 2000 upon request from one of his employees, allowing staff to bring their felines to work, while other Japanese companies they are also allowing animals into the office to help reduce stress and anxiety. You know, I actually thought briefly about suggesting this for the radio station here, but then I realized if I do suggest it, I would be the one stuck cleaning the litter box. If you're having a rough day, just think back on some good times. Psychologists from Rutgers University they write in the journal Nature – Human Behavior that self-generated positive emotions help the brain switch its narrow focus on a bad situation to a wider focus. The researchers had 134 volunteers plunge their hands into icy water and half then thought of good memories for 14 seconds, while others focused on neutral memories. Those who thought of the happy times, they felt calmer and had stress hormone levels 15% lower than those who thought of neutral memories. And thinking of the good times even cut the stress response by as much as 85%. They then added it's even more effective if you don't put your hands into ice water. Scientists have been able to create baby mice from freeze-dried mouse sperm that was kept on the International Space Station. <laughs> Thank goodness, huh? Because we all know how dangerously low the mouse population is on this planet. Andrew Schalk, a high school junior with type 1 diabetes and his dog Alpha, they go everywhere together, including school at Stafford High in Virginia. Alpha is there to help Andrew manage his blood sugar levels during the day. The pair have gone viral since Andrew and Alpha are featured in side-by-side -side photos in the school's yearbook. Strangely, the dog was voted prom king, while Andrew was voted boy with the coldest nose. Scientists have identified 51 human genes that are tied to intelligence. And for the record, none of those genes had large holes in their noses or tattooed foreheads. He's back now, but ABC executives were reportedly upset that Houston native and Good Morning America anchor Michael Strahan did not cut his vacation short to return and cover Hurricane Harvey. The source tells Page Six of the New York Post, ABC News asked Strahan to come home from his vacation, but he refused. 
Well, th this is kind of ridiculous. I mean, Houston is completely swamped, but, oh, but if only Strahan could get there, then everything would be okay. Suicide Squad 2 is already in the works, and nobody knows why. Leslie Van Houten, the youngest of Charles Manson's family, was recommended for parole last week. She still has to get approval by the parole board and the governor, which denied her last year. And I say we keep that streak alive. Christian Bale has packed on the pounds for his next role as Dick Cheney in the upcoming movie Backseat. He's also training hard on how to use a gun so in the hunting scene he can believably accidentally shoot another actor. An initiative set up to find signs of intelligent life in the universe has detected a series of mysterious radio signals from a dwarf galaxy 3 billion light years away. Scientists say they have found 15 fast radio bursts from deep space. The first signal was detected in 2012 and then again in 2015. Now, I would say that we'd be safe and not try to make contact back, but yeah, seeing as it would take at least 3 billion years for them to get our reply, I don't think it matters either way. Dennis Rodman has offered to straighten things out between Trump and Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Remember back in the day when you'd hear something like that and they would immediately put you into a padded room? A recent search of a New York home's basement led to the discovery of more than a half dozen sharks swimming inside an above-ground pool that was set up in the basement. In all, seven live sandbar sharks as well as two dead leopard sharks and one dead hammerhead shark were found inside the property. The home, roughly 75 miles north of New York City, was suspected of harboring illegal wildlife. The animals, which were described as swimming in a 15-foot diameter pool, were captured with ease before being measured, tagged, and having their blood taken. They were then transported to the Long Island Aquarium in Riverhead. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the basement. Hollywood execs are partially blaming the website Rotten Tomatoes for the terrible summer at the box office. They're saying that lousy reviews scared a lot of potential moviegoers away. Well, here's a solution. Make better movies! When three crooks were disturbed during a robbery at a restaurant in Araguay, they acted very calmly. The thieves had already locked one employee in a back room and forced another to hand over cash when they were interrupted by customers. Instead of fleeing the scene, the trio stayed around for half an hour serving food. Dude! You're willing to actually do the work of serving food. How about instead of demanding money, you demand a job application? A Toyota flying car is planned to light the Olympic torch at the upcoming 2020 Summer Games. One step closer to Olympics, where we need no human athletes at all. Just in case you don't know, Vermont is one of our northern border states with Canada. So it seems 53-year-old Alberg, Vermont resident Mark Johnson wasn't particularly happy with the job our Border Patrol agents were doing. When he came upon U.S. Border Patrol agent Robert Rochelo, Johnson climbed down from his tractor and demanded to know why Rochelo wasn't doing more to apprehend illegal immigrants. Johnson said people working in the U.S. illegally were damaging his livelihood. Well, after the heated exchange, Johnson got back into his tractor and, as Rochelo reported, while passing by my vehicle, Mr. Johnson engaged the PTO shaft to his trailer and covered my vehicle in cow manure. Johnson pleaded not guilty in Vermont Superior Court in North Hero, saying he didn't know the car was nearby when he turned on his manure spreader. The Florida sheriff actually had to tweet a warning to thousands of people not to shoot their guns at Hurricane Irma. As everybody knows, all that'll do is make her more angry. Billionaire Richard Branson promised to ride out Hurricane Irma on his private island in the Caribbean, and he did just that – in style. In a blog post, Branson said he and his crew made it through the night safely on Necker Island, his 74-acre retreat in the British Virgin Islands, by hunkering down in the wine cellar. Branson posted, We took shelter from the strongest hurricane ever inside the concrete cellar on Necker, and very, very fortunately, it held firm. However, he added that the Category 5 Irma was unlike any storm he'd ever encountered. Necker and the whole area have been completely and utterly devastated, he wrote, urging anyone in its path to seek shelter. Uh, no word on whether there was any wine left once the storm was over. 
credit reporting agency Equifax reports that hackers may have the names and social security numbers of 143 million Americans after a massive breach of their computer records. But don't worry, 143 million, that's only half of the country. So there's a 50-50 chance you're okay. Despite what the news tells you, not everywhere in the world is full of crime. Dutch prisons are closing because the country is so safe. In 2013, 19 prisons in the Netherlands closed because the country didn't have enough criminals to fill them. Now five more are slated to close their doors by the end of the summer. The problem of empty jails has even gotten to the point where last September the country imported 240 prisoners from Norway just to keep the facilities full. What happens when your country's biggest import is felons? Easy. You become Australia. Rumors had Barbara Walters in failing health. She says not true. At least that's what I think she said through all of that coughing and phlegm. An Arizona principal has been arrested and charged with luring teenage girls to a skinny-dipping party at his house. 59-year-old Carl Wagner is facing charges of luring a minor for sexual exploitation and aggravated luring and misrepresenting his age after he admitted to posting invitations to his pool party online. Wagner had just been hired this summer as principal of Four Peaks Elementary School, with this being his first official week. And what better way to kick off an extremely short and creepy career at the school? Attendance declined at 13 of 14 Disney theme parks around the world in 2016 compared with 2015. Gee, I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that you got to fork over your life savings in order to enter the park. Police in one Pennsylvania town say they were terrified by red balloons tied to sewer grates in apparent anticipation of the remake of Stephen King's creepy clown thriller It. The Lilithsboro police posted last week on Facebook, a certain movie is coming to theaters and a local prankster took it upon themselves to promote the movie. We give points for creativity, however, we want the local prankster to know that we were completely terrified as we removed these balloons from the grates, and we respectfully request they do not do it again. <laughs> Wait until the cops see what they've got planned for the premiere of the next Saw movie. Near Seattle, police have arrested a Lake Stevens man who portrayed himself as being FBI agent Jack Ryan in order to rob several businesses run by East African immigrants. Authorities have declared him a clear and present danger. A recent study showed that 85 percent of millennial moms would like to receive acknowledgement that they're doing a good job rather than receiving flowers. Well, that should make Mother's Day a lot more affordable next year. A study at Stanford has resulted in an AI that can determine if a person is gay or not by their facial features. Not 100 percent, but close. So humans profiling is wrong, but robots doing it is science. Cheerleading could become an Olympic sport by 2024. And now you know why fewer and fewer people are watching the Olympics. A man in California says he was trapped in his fifth-floor San Francisco area apartment recently after a delivery driver left a tall rectangular box just under the handle of his front door. Jesse Lawrence claims a UPS worker left the box blocking the handle from turning, and he had to call maintenance to get out. You know, personally, I would have skipped calling maintenance. I would have ordered a pizza so the driver would move the box in order to make the delivery. Not only would my problem be solved, but pizza! If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. To become an official weirdo, click that subscribe button and click that little bell next to the subscribe button to be a part of the notification squad. While you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are an official weirdo.